Welcome to Analyzing the 1%. Today we're going to talk about the fundamental role of the arts, of aesthetics, of beauty in society. And uh, I believe that it's going to be very helpful for us to perceive this more clearly because most people don't perceive the fundamental aspect of having art in society. My name is Gilbert Gambucci and I am from Stop the Destruction of the World Association. I am also an occupier at Wall Street and I am a, by profession a pianist and psychosocial analyst. That is, we analyze the, the correlation between psychological factors and social factors in order to clarify a phenomenon. And I would like to ask you, what do you think? Um, does art show us a reality or a fantasy? What do you think? Because most people have the idea that art, even though it's something agreeable, I really like the arts, but unfortunately it's a fantasy and my everyday reality has nothing to do with it. Uh, and so people go to the theater or to plays, uh, concerts, and they get really enthralled. They love it. But they, they feel as though that's a fantasy because our everyday lives are quite different. And I have really another perspective for you today because this is an er inverted idea about the arts. And I would like to begin by showing us a little, a little film clip of, um, you know, there, it's a collection of old postcards of um, Coney Island in the 20s, in the 1920s, you know, Surf Avenue and on the Bowery, and principally in Luna Park, uh, the dreamland of Luna Park when it was built just being built and uh, take notice of the architecture of this place and the link that it has with uh, invention and engineering and you could even notice the clothes of the people i want you to notice the aesthetic of the place this place where people would go on the weekends to get out of new york and my question to you is this uh, is this a reality or a fantasy what is this phenomenon of Surf Avenue, Dreamland, there at Coney Island in the 20s. And these uh, old postcards, they're accompanied by um, a music rhapsody in, in rhythm by the McAlpiners. Okay, it's a great music from the 20s, rhapsody in rhythm. And, uh, and it's kind of short, so really look closely at these postcards because I want to see what you think. Can we roll this rhapsody in blue? A rhapsody in rhythm.
You know, our everyday lives, society, is full of pathology, as we say, sick elements. That is to say, corruption is a sick element. Aggressivity, these assaults that take place, deceitfulness, envy, these are very pathological elements. And so, these things are not from the essence of the human being. These things are a part of our sickness that we put into society. And so, this is a fantasy. The everyday life that we live is something that's out of reality. It's a delirium. And what the artists are trying to show us is the, the, real, the reality, the real life, without our interference in that real life, without our pathology, as we say. This is a metaphysical question of the difference between essence and existence. You know, we put so many pathological elements in the society that we can't stand living in it anymore. That is to say, we put things in our existence that is not, that is not in harmony with our essence. And if you study uh, metaphysics, especially Kepian metaphysics, which has made corrections, corrections of uh, Aristotelian metaphysics, the, the aspects of Aristotle's metaphysics that are incongruent, that are incorrect, you'll see that the essence of the human being is goodness, it is beauty, and it is truth. This is our essence. Then around that essence, we have an opposition to it, our pathology. You know, our envy, our anger, our hatred, these things, the corruption. And so we create an existence that is not in harmony with our essence. And the artists are trying to show us an existence that is in harmony with our essence, that is beautiful, that life should be, as Charlie Chaplin says, a, a beautiful adventure. This is the reality that the Creator has given to us to live in and develop. And you know, this um, uh, really, I have an interesting perspective on uh, Kepian science, that social life it has to adapt itself to aesthetics in order to enter into reality. That is to say, the reality of the Creator. You know, the ideal of Walt Disney was to create with, with the Disney World, the Disneyland. He wanted to create a, a, a model city of the future to correct the problems that we have in our society, in our existence. So the artists of Disney, they made the monorail where people can travel above ground. And below the ground, the subway w is used for uh, cargo things, to transport um, merchandise. You know, and, and there the garbage chutes and all the stores, they go down to a, a central location and are incinerated. And everything to make life more enchanting, more beautiful. Uh, originally, in the Disneyland, he even had planned a residential area where it was proposed where you can live without direct interference of powerful people. And so, but what happened was the multinationals uh, funding the Disneyland, Walt Disney's ideal, they took it and they made it a big promotion for themselves. They exaggerated the, the park aspect of it and they put themselves there and they passed the idea to us, um, you know, let us take care of the future world. And so it turned into a, a promotion for the multinationals a beautiful ideal used wrongly. And in fact, in this example, we can see that this is what the economically powerful do with our society in general. They take the qualities of working people, of the I American ideals, and then they use them in a wrong way for themselves so that they can better exploit humanity and take to themselves everything that they want. And... Um, you know, the artists, they're, they're showing us the possibility of living a, a beautiful life. And really, if we have a more just society, then this would inhibit the more mentally ill people from dominating society, from getting into positions of power, as we see they do, especially uh, economic power. Um, and so, I have a little video clip for example, of um, made from uh, some of our occupiers uh, in the doo-wop style. I just want to show you this, this question of artists. Um, they, we're not agreeing with the society the way it is, this very exploitative, 
a very corrupt, a very sterilized society without a soul. Uh, because the soul of society is really the artist, an art, a beauty, aesthetics. And so uh, I was in, in, in the very first months of Occupy Wall Street, I was fascinated to see that most of the people there are artists, people who've laid down their art to go there and protest according to our constitutional rights, uh, a peaceful protest, because the situation is no longer acceptable. We're living in a type of existence that has nothing to do with our essence, in a very sick existence. And so, for example, just to show you um, uh, the work of uh, an example, this is in the doo-wop style. They're called the doo occupy. And this particular piece is called O Fannie Mae, in relation to uh, Fannie Mae, the Federal National Mortgage Association. And there's reference to Freddie Mae, the Federal Home Loan Mortgage uh, Corporation. Uh, because of the, the foreclosing of millions of homes in the United States, uh, that um, this very immoral situation, and even illegal in many instances, and showing how these, um, the uh, Fannie Mae, Freddie Mae, are in bed with the Wall Street speculators. That is to say, to make money. You know, uh, these Wall Street speculators, I remember many times they, they would pass in front of us there at uh, Liberty Square and say, oh, why don't you get a job? Why don't you work? And uh, speculators don't work. You know, they take the money from capital produced by companies, produced by people who work, and then they speculate with that. They make themselves wealthy using money from people who work. And now the situation has gotten to the point where the speculation, making money with money, is so much greater than the workforce of the nation that there's nothing to support anymore, the, the speculators. And so the whole thing comes down together. You know, the, the basis for, um, for the stock market is uh, the capital that comes from the companies. It's the workforce. It's uh, industry, agriculture, the working people. And so speculators don't work. They, they, they just, they rob. They're gamblers and they extract. Do you know, uh, there's much said that speculators need to pay tax on what they get. No, that's not the idea at all. It's not to ask them for to throw a few crumbs to <laughs> pay tax. Speculation, money speculation, must be prohibited because it destroys the economy. When are we going to start to perceive this? You know, money speculators, they're much too in character, they're much too close, too similar to the Rockefeller or Rothschilds people. It's a very imbalanced, mentally imbalanced situation. So let's see this uh, video clip uh, of Do Occupy, O Fannie Mae. O Fannie Mae
strong with us now as we tell those big bad banks no 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 fanny no you know there's nothing that can substitute for social values, for cultural values. Where there are no values in a people, or, or very little, then you have to make uh, laws and regulations to try to control the pathology of the human being. And so what happens, you know, for example, um, we see uh, shootings that take place in the high schools and in different places that uh, didn't used to happen, these, this type of phenomenon, this, these aggressions. And we notice that there are less values among the people. Partly, this is because the United States is always at war. And this affects the entire population, this question of being aggressive. You know, it's, it's collectively, it, it affects people more than you think. Um, but what happens is, where do social values come from? Where do our cultural values come from? You know, they come from the arts. Social values come from aesthetics, from beauty, from having a contact with beauty. Because inside, when, when you have contact with beauty, this brings out the, the essence of being, of who we are, which is goodness. It's the truth, and it's beauty. Being is beauty. And so having contact with the art, it brings out these values that are naturally good, and they can't be replaced by laws. You know, people are, are imbalanced, and so laws can't hold that together, as well as social values. And so aesthetics, art, is the basis of all social and cultural values. This is one of the roles of art and the artist in society. Do you see how important that is? We have to protect the artists because they're very heavily exploited. You know, they're not, generally speaking, they're not so interested in, uh, in money uh, as, as, as uh, financial people are. And so they kind of have to be protected. Uh, in fact, you know, the, mu the um, museums and galleries should belong to the artists. Uh, theaters should belong to the performers and musicians. Why do they belong to somebody else? You know, uh, musicians don't own the places of work where other people work. Why do other people own where the musicians work? You see, our society is very uh, inverted. And, um, you know, you can't avoid the metaphysical question in relation to art because it has values in it that are eternal. I would like to, uh, a little bit different today, I would like to read two paragraphs of this book, Liberation of the People. It's a, the pathology of power. It's a study of people who have economic power. And on the front it says, the first scientific study of the psychosocial pathology of people with power. Psychotics who are impeding human development and destroying society. Okay? And uh, there's one chapter in here called Persecution of the Artist, the Soul of Society. And look, the creator is basically affection. And as the artist is basically emotion, it means that the creator is closer to him than to any other human being. Those who are most rejected by socioeconomic power, artists, women, honest scientists, workers, and children, are precisely those who are most loved by the creator. When artists paint angelic figures on the domes of churches and palaces, it is because they live in the realm of angels. When musicians bring heaven to the earth, it is because heaven is their home. When sculptors and architects fill the city's parks and streets with beauty, it is because they have grasped this wonder directly from the Creator. This is the real world because it is eternal. The Creator dwells in the hearts of the artist, even though many may be homosexuals. The Creator dwells mainly in the hearts of women, even though many of them may be prostitutes. 
the Creator dwells in the hearts of men, even though many of them may be thieves and criminals. But the Creator does not dwell in the hearts of the powerful, especially those with economic power, for their feelings are turned towards money and the exploitation of others. The Creator loves those who wish to accomplish something of worth, and He abhors those whose intention is to harm their fellow man. Thus the commandment to love one another is best honored by those who cultivate the arts. A reading from Liberation of the People by Norberto Kepi. And you know, um, because the value of the arts is not very well perceived, we have an inversion in society. That is, things are upside down. We see in first place uh, questions of banking and finance and commerce, these things which are actually secondary in a civilization. You know, economics is the result of civilization. It's not the basis. Uh, and what is secondary in society, the arts, uh, science, uh, culture, these things are in second place. So the situation is inverted. You know, the more important, civilization is culture. It is the arts and science and philosophy of life. And in secondary place, it questions of finance, economy, how to economize, commercial trade. These are secondary elements. But today in society, the situation is inverted. And we need to correct this. Uh, we need to adapt ourselves to the aesthetics, to develop uh, uh, a relationship with the arts, with beauty, with aesthetics, so that we can enter more and more into reality. Okay? So, look, um, take back what has been stolen from you, whether it has been stolen um, immorally or illegally by the 1%. Take it back. Occupy and see you again on Analyzing the 1%. So we have people So don't.